Okay, welcome everybody. I'm here uh, talking online, um, uh, talking with Jonathan Wyatt. Uh, Jonathan now based in Italy, um, and I'm the lucky person here um, in Wellington that gets to chat with him tonight. So uh, look, we're going to start off uh, what the purpose of the evening's about, Jonathan. We're talking about Hart Valley Harriers um, here for the centenary celebrations. Um, and look, it'd be wonderful just to hear a little bit from you about how you got involved with Hart Valley Harriers and maybe a little bit about your junior running career as you started in with the club, maybe some influences that you had. Yeah, look, thanks, Reese. Uh, it, it's fantastic to be here. And uh, um, I'm really, really, it's really a fantastic celebration, really. Uh, 100 years of Hutt Valley Harriers. That's, uh, uh, that, that's quite an achievement for a club to be uh, continuously active and alive for, uh, for such, a, such a long period of time. And uh, I can certainly uh, reminisce for for hours, which I I won't do uh, here here tonight. But um, yeah, I got so much out of the club because really, I, I it was really the start of my running career. Um, I, I did have a, a brief flurry over the hill in Wainui Yamata uh, for for a year, but um, when I I joined Wainui, uh, when I when I joined Hutt Valley Harriers for the first time. Uh, under the uh, under the nine eye swimming pool uh, where the club rooms were when I was uh, when I first joined, um, that was really where I found a, a a great group of of I guess like minded runners um, under the uh, under the very wise and uh, uh, and enthusiastic guidance of a of a uh, of our coach Bruce Curse. Um, so yeah. Th- for sure, everything that's come after has been uh, as a result of those uh, of those first early years. And look, you, you got your start at Hutt Valley Harriers, but um, as many people will know, you went on to have quite, I guess, in New Zealand terms, quite an illustrious uh, career. Uh, two Olympic Games, two Commonwealth Games, six world mountain running titles. Um, look, we know about the accolades. Um, but is there anything you can tell us maybe about any of those major events or are there any events that don't come up in that list of achievements that um, you think people might be interested to hear about? Yeah, look, I, um, my first love is really cross-country running. So that's um, that's where the, where the Harrier Club really, um, really gelled with me and really gave me my foundation. Um, but of course, uh, as my ambition sort of grew, um, I, I moved onto the track and, and, and spent some years concentrating on track and field. Um, so culminating at the Olympic Games, uh, the first first time I was at the Olympics in Atlanta in 1996. Um, and then as uh, as I evolved as a runner, um, you know, so did the the distances and the and the types of running that I enjoyed doing. So. There was a period of uh, doing some more road races and marathon, um, where um, I, w- I was lucky enough to to get to a second Olympic Games in Athens in 2004. Um, but it also coincided a little bit with my um, with my love of cross country running, where I actually found something that was even more cross country than cross country. So uh, that was where I went uh, and discovered the mountains. Uh, so. Really, when I, I I got really involved into mountain running, um, that was when uh, um, when I I really also moved as well from being based in New Zealand to uh, to being based overseas. Um, the circuits for for mountain running is heavily uh, involved around the mountains, the Alps, and in, in Europe. And um, I just really love that uh, atmosphere and and that style of running. And it uh, and it seemed to suit my um, my abilities as well. Being uh, being a strong runner, I, I I was always put um, I was always put on the uphill laps of relays. So uh, so the uphill running seemed to seemed to come naturally from an early age, and uh, and that yeah, like you say, it culminated in those uh, in those mountain running titles. Awesome. And um, uh, look, you mentioned um, about some of those key races that you've had overseas. Um, what about back in New Zealand? Um, you've done a lot of racing in New Zealand as a junior um, and uh, in both track and cross country and mountain running. Um, are there any key races uh, either locally in Wellington um, or in New Zealand that kind of uh, were a, 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 a part of your junior career that you remember fondly? Well, well I think the type of running that we, we grew up with, um, especially cross country running, it really lends itself to 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 becoming strong and um 
and it really built me a, a really solid foundation for the for the races that I did later on. Um, gosh, I remember uh, you know the Vossler the Vossler Shield. Uh, you know that was you could call that a mountain race rather than a cross country race uh, because of the uh, because of the terrain that you run over, um, and then to have the chance to to actually run over the Vossler Shield course in a slightly different direction at the World Mountain Running Champs. Uh, Later on in, in 2005, well, that was you know that was is still remains probably my my all time highlight of my running career. Um, but then then for sure the um, again some of those those relay races that we used to do and, and building that sort of that, that that team and and having fun you know when when uh, when my contemporaries you know the Jeremy Boyds Jason Brown uh, uh, we had Richard Gerling we had um, we just had a, just a great group of runners and. And, and and to have um to have our coach Bruce Kirst to 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 manage us and to and to make sure we uh, we turned up at the right time, um yeah, I think I think built the um built the environment for all of us to flourish. Uh, um, we had those relays out at the the shore batten out at out at Pawatuhanui Pawatuh Inlet, um where where even even that was you know part of the foundation. We actually did the relay. I remember one year I did. Um, uh, I think I, I ran an early lap where I ran it flat out, and then uh, I ran an, a, lap, a lap later on for the for the B or the C team, uh, and then um, and then we all turned around and, and ran back to the Hutt Valley. So uh, that was that was a good training day. Um, but those those are the memories that I really love. You know, they're running over the hills, uh, you know, through the rivers, and uh, um, and I've I've always in, always loved wearing the the, uh, the tangerine singlet. <laughs> Yeah, well, look, the uh, the colour of the singlet hasn't changed. Um, we had the Vossler Shield on the weekend, and I must say that uh, um, a change from last year certainly seemed to see a lot more um, of the Hutt Valley singlets um, out this year. A bunch of juniors coming through, which is great to see um, carrying on that heritage. Um, you mentioned about the Shore Batten, um, some great competitive races there, and I know um, as as part of my club, uh, I was involved uh, in some battles uh, with Hutt Valley Harriers, um, with teams that you and, and Nick Willis and Steve Willis were in. Um, one thing I recall is um, we used to hear stories about you maybe doing eight by three workout around the bays in the morning with John Henwards, and then you'd turn up at Shaw Batten and you'd break the record out at Shaw Batten. Um, was that something that you found um as far as combining your your high level training with those local races was really important to you yeah look um you know again it comes about sort of building the base i maybe i wasn't even a, you know thinking about it so much at the time but um i think we were, we all wanted to raise the bar and 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 that was you know that was the hard training we were we were prepared to do um, because certainly, you know, by that stage, uh, when I was doing those those kinds of, you know, hard sessions in the morning and then turning up to race in the afternoon, um, it, it does it does harden you up as a as a runner, um, but also you know also builds the uh, it builds the strength and, and conditioning, um, and then of course you know don't forget on Sunday uh, we'd 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 turn up with a group of ten or ten or twelve uh, runners and uh, you know run out from. From uh, you know uh, out the back of Wainui, out round the coast, and 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 back over the five mile track, and or or, or especially my my first love, uh, living in the Western Hills, uh, running out the back of Belmont up Belmont Trig and uh, and Cornish Street, and um, you know those are those are sort of the sort of areas as a Wellingtonian uh, running up and down the hills that um, you know that I'm I'm sure we all love as a uh, as a as a Harrier runner. Yeah, look, and I'm sure and. In recalling some of those uh, trails around Wellington, especially around Wainui, that um, uh, look, I'm sure there's be a few club members that are either familiar with them now or maybe back in their uh, heyday of running, they were out there uh, and used to see you go flying past as well. Hey, um, look, we, we are here to celebrate Hutmilly Harriers, so and I know that within the uh, within the way that clubs are structured, that you do have your own club races and some of your own quite specific. Uh, club runs or club events are there any that you remember for your time at Hutt Valley Harriers um, that were especially memorable or or interesting that the club used to do uh, just within their own club yeah look I think I think one of the one of the key events for Hutt Valley Harriers was always the Dawn Cup um, that was that was the uh, that was the sort of the inter-club inter-club race where uh, where Hutt Valley, Hutt Valley were the um, <coughs> excuse me were the organizers and um, so it was always always a kind of a key event 
um, eight kilometers for the seniors. And um, that was always kind of, you know, I guess for me, part of the early season focus to to kind of know where you were at. So that was that was definitely a, a, a key kind of a local Wellingtonian race and, and sort of part of the, you know, part of the big series, if you could count, you know, uh, you know, the Vossler Shield, the Dawn Cup, uh, and then, of course, the Centre Champs, you know, is, is, is the three big cross-country race. But, um, yeah, definitely I got so much out of, uh, you know, and I think something that's very unique to New Zealand running um, are the relays and uh, especially the road relays. So uh, you can imagine, um, you know, a bunch of, uh, you know, sort of 18, 19, 20-year-olds. Uh, uh, well, actually, we, when, we, when we did the junior races, uh, under 20-year-olds, um, all piling in, in and out of uh, you know Toyota uh, Hilux, you know tw- those Toyota vans that that are probably incredibly dangerous, um, and uh, and we all just uh, yeah just had had such a, a fantastic time. Um, you know, uh, looking looking back at those, you sort of wonder. Um, I guess with health and safety these days, it's probably those those times will never never come back again. Uh, um, but uh, yeah, definitely we. Um, you know, we did the Akaroa relay. Um, you know that, that that classic sort of you know uh, eighty odd kilometers, um, and of course the uh, the relay around um, the back of uh, Palmerston North. Uh, you know the Nielsen relay. Um, you know these are all sort of fantastic, um, you know, fantastic club races, which really uh, really raise the spirit of the club, and 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 those were sort of the real highlights of the year. Um, you know. It, in a way, it didn't really matter about your own performance as long as as long as you gave everything you could. Um, you know, it was you got so much more enjoyment about you know how how the team got on and uh, and of course uh, you know uh, the the after party afterwards was always something to look forward to. Yeah, yeah. Well, look, uh, obviously tonight it's uh, you're going to be missing out on the after party here, but uh, uh, look, uh, I know that. Uh, some of the people attending um, the centenary celebrations um, will be well familiar with your um, uh, running career and some of the younger ones who maybe aren't as familiar with that. Um, they'll also may be interested just to hear a little bit about where you're at now, what you're doing, um, how your running career is going or where that's led to with maybe uh, the job you're in now. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so running career wise, um, that's, that's probably the one that I uh, don't, uh, be talking about least. Uh, I, I'm I'm still active in running. Um, I, I definitely not a racer anymore. Um, but my my day job is I, I work for a company called La Sportiva, um, which is actually based just uh, ten minutes walk down the road from the town where where I'm living. Um, I'm living in the heart of the Dolomite Mountains, uh, and it's a pretty decent place to go and test out the next season's running shoes. So that's uh, that's a big part of my job is uh, is the development on the on the next set of trail shoes, which uh, which La Sportiva will be uh, um, will be producing, so I've been with them now for about five years. Uh, and another part of my job, I, I do um, I do still uh, work and am involved with the World Mountain Running Association. Um, I, I was the president for for four years. Um, now I'm still actively involved with organising their World Cup uh, circuit, uh, which will kick off in about uh, two weeks' time. And finally, um, I, I've kind of transferred my love of, uh, of racing into a love of coaching. So um, I, I have a, a fairly small stable of athletes, um, but uh, it's something that I've really, really enjoyed. And that really does keep you deeply involved with the, with the sport as well. So um, I've got a few racing next week. So uh, I'll be uh, I'll be up there, up in Innsbruck next week at the World Mountain Running Championships uh, to, to cheer them on. And look, I, I think from from afar, it's actually been really cool to see your name popping up recently, uh, especially with some New Zealand athletes that are performing really well um, on the trail circuit, and to see you um, moving into that kind of coaching realm uh, as well. That's been really, really cool to see. And uh, look, I, I know we've got to wrap it up. We've got a, a long evening ahead. But uh, look, I just do want to give you an opportunity to um, uh, kind of, I'll give you the last word. Um, just to maybe say anything you want to say to uh, to the club, um, and uh, and we'll leave it there. And thanks very much for your time, Jono. 
Yeah, look, thank you, Reese. Look, I'd just like to wish all the members, old and new, all of the supporters, uh, and enjoying the celebrations. Uh, I really do wish I could be there. I'm uh, I'm gutted I can't. I actually really did uh, look at the at the schedule, um, but uh, yeah, I would uh, just want to you know, wish you such a such a wonderful evening and con congratulations to to the Harrier Club, Harrier's on on 100 years. It's a fantastic achievement.